In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to design a simple Tronix design tutorial logo. So, hi guys and welcome to the first ever tutorial recorded here under our Tronix channel. My name is Manny and I'll show you guys how to, yeah, just do simple, fun and easy designs. I normally teach Photoshop on a different channel called Retard Pro, but that is something completely different. It's more photography world. On this channel, I'm going to do more design tutorials. Alright, so let's get right into it. As you guys can see on the screen, we have this Tronix design tutorial logo from our new channel. And I'm basically going to show you guys how I achieved to create this from scratch. So right away, as you guys can see, I'm still in the full screen mode. So I'm going to press F and just move out of the full screen here. So we can actually leave the banner there, maybe we can just minimize this. And right away, before we even start with the canvas size and stuff, I wanted to show you guys, this is actually the background that we're going to use. And then as well, I sourced another image here, just some lines from the web as well. As you guys can see, it's also pretty uh, unblurry here or unsharp. It's not really a super high quality file, but it's working actually for the whole purpose of just adding it to the logo because we're not going to use it on a full opacity and you will never see those sharp lines. All right, so let's get also right into it. What we're going to do is go to File up here. We're going to go to New and right away, I just want to open a new canvas size here. So I'm going to go under Presets here and just choose my preset ready which is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels under resolution 300 as well and this is just normally set to the full screen or the basically the HD uh, format that I have for my videos so that's why I chose this canvas size. Okay I'm going to hit OK and this will open directly for us. On the right hand side here again as you guys can see the background is still locked. I'm just going to press F to make it nice and full screen. Great, I'm going to double tap on here and just say, okay, that's maybe our start. We don't actually need that, but let's see. Okay, accept that. Now for the first step that I want to do, I'm just pressing F again, full screen here. I want to import these two files just quickly into here. So first of all, the city here, which I also just found online, is basically just called Future City. Uh, Google that and you I actually found this image and it looked really nice because of all the colors and all the bright sun flares. So I thought this would look pretty cool as a background. Okay, I'm going to take the background layer here, just move it right into our new canvas over here and as well going to select the lines and also going to select the layer over here and just move it over. I'm going to hold shift so that clips directly as well because it's already on the same canvas and image size here. Okay, I can minimize all of this, press F, full screen mode again here, and we are now, again, away from the background, it's not distracting us. Alright, so I'm going to minimize and turn this off, layer 2, which is basically the lines, then I'm going to take layer number 1 here, and literally just move this in a little bit. So as you guys can see, it's not on the same size, it's a little bit uh, bigger, well, it is actually on the right size, which is pretty good. If it wouldn't be, I'm just going to press Z and zoom out a little bit. Press Command T as well, and as you guys can see, it just literally just fits in. It's a little bit bigger though from the top and bottom, but that doesn't really play a big role now. So I can just move it down like this, and yeah, that's pretty pretty happy where that is. I'm gonna accept it here from the top, and our first step that I want to do is I can also just rename stuff here, so I know exactly where what is. The city I want to blur that a little bit. So obviously we have a complete blurred background for the start. Then as well, I'm gonna go to Filter. I'm gonna go to Blur. Gaussian blur over here. Okay, and directly you guys can see that this is blurred quite a lot. It would most probably start like this on your screen. So I would take it all the way up to like 20%. Then I would have like a look. Is it still blurry enough or not? And I think you guys can still see too much detail in the background. You kind of can still uh, say what it is. So that's why I chose to go up a little bit more. Say something like 30%. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. 35 would actually be good. 36, that's fine as well. All right, so I'm going to go for 35 now. Let's just type in 35 here. Okay, great. I'm going to hit OK over here, and we already have a super nice blurred background. Now as well, I'm going to switch on the lines over here. Let's maybe just rename the layer to line. Okay, accept that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. As you guys can see, it's still super unsharp, but that's fine. It's all right for the logo. What I'm going to do is first of all try to just switch it to lighten to just see, yeah, it's very bright. The whole image is very bright, so we obviously have white everywhere. I thought with those black lines here that they will might disappear a little bit, 
but no they don't so I'm gonna switch it back to normal and as well take the opacity all the way down say maybe like just to I actually like that it's getting really brighter now as well due to that okay I'm gonna switch it to like just the nine percent yeah and that's already building just the background super simple as you guys can see here just with the lines as well looks nicely so for the next step now what I want to do is actually basically just bring in some help lines from the top and bottom to kind of determine where the center point is here so I'm gonna to go to view and as well I'm gonna to go to new guide okay a new box will open under vertical we can first of all write 50 and also 50 percent there okay and we're gonna do the same step again new guide horizontal this time and again 50 percent okay so directly we have a center point here and we can now work from here next step that I'm going to do is take the text tool okay select the text tool I'm gonna to make it nice and big here and just I'm actually gonna move away here from just the font because I've already selected the font but anyways I'm gonna write now Tronics okay Tronics there we go select all with command A if you are Windows user please always use control when I say command okay so select all Next step that I'm going to do is obviously go to the font that I've selected and this is street cred just OT1 and if you guys want to look for more of the textures and basically all the text fonts that I use you can have a look in the description or you can also find them on the font I normally or most of the time just surf on dafont.com it's pretty awesome but find all the links in the description down below okay so Tronics it is over here and first of all what I'm going to do is make it really nice and big so I'm going to just make the font size here nice and big accept that first of all and also take the mouse tool move that a little bit down and as you guys can see it's already uh, skewed so it's already leaning a little bit this is because it's obviously here under the character field it's already selected so if I deselect that again it will move back to its original font type size here and the original typeface so if you guys don't have this character box over here simply to also go just to window and write character over here so you can actually see that box so now it's gone I'm gonna just open the palette again under characters there we go normally when I do designs I always work with this box it's the best you can have alright so let's also select the what's they actually called here the just the leaning um, italic again yep alright so I'm gonna zoom and make this a bit higher here now for the next step to simplify my life a little bit I'm gonna press command J just duplicate this text here drag it down a little bit press T for the text tool again select it select all with command A and I'm just gonna write now design and we are also gonna write tutorials okay command A again selecting all then as well I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller here so literally a little bit more a little bit more Okay, great. Now I do want to select a different font for that and I also want to select a font that's really, really thin and slick and not leaning, no italic on that. So let's switch the italic off for the start. Okay, I'm going to go here to my fonts and I already have a really nice font which I love to work with. It's very, very thin. Under H, it's called Heretica something, Helvetica Neue. I'll also put that in the description. I know my pronunciation here is not the best but anyways so again I've got that and it's still not the thinnest but what I can do here under the options here I can still select ultra light so select ultra light and you guys can see that looks pretty slick very very thin okay so I'm gonna move that now first of all let's accept that and I'm gonna move that a little bit under here and for me personally now this is still a little bit too big the, th the font is just a little bit too big so I'm going to press T again, select all of it, and going to make this maybe half the size of it. Something like that. Okay, great. And now what I'm going to do is basically go over here to the character box again, and just select this slider over here, and basically going to slide the letters a little bit wider. So, okay, a little bit more. Like maybe just like 110. Let's try that more, 130. 150, 160, okay that's getting big, I need to see stuff a little bit further away, Wait, okay I'm gonna select 190 for the start, accept that and what I just meant was I have to see it a bit further away, I'm gonna press Z and zoom out a little bit and then I'm kind of getting a feel of if it's too big or stretched too much or not, but I, I really like it, 
So I'm just meaning, I normally zoom out to see stuff a little bit further away and then I decide if I want to go continue or fix it again. Okay, great. So I'm going to zoom in again. Next step that I want to do is create again a new layer here. So let's just create a new layer and I'm just going to write here dot and this is going to be our little small white dot. Okay, just fix that. And I'm going to go to the marking tool on the left hand side here and just select the elliptical marking tool. Hold shift to make an equal um, expanding elliptical selection here. And I'm literally just going to make a really small dot like that. And I can see that it's not super great. Okay, let's just zoom in. You guys can see the selection over here. Now on this layer as well, I'm just going to, while I'm still in the marking tool or still have the marking tool selected, I go into the selection, not out of the side of the selection, in the selection. Press right click and say fill. Fill this again with new white content here. Okay. Yeah, and that's basically all. Command D, so get out of the selection so we can move this around and we're done with it. Great. So uh, again, from the top, what I'm going to do is just with the move tool here, I'm just going to drag down another help layer. Basically in the center of design and tutorials, place it somewhere over there. Okay, and a little more. Nope, I don't want to get into the line options. Hello, okay. Take it down a little bit further. Yeah, and now what I want to do is take the dot layer here and literally just move the dot over here. Okay, a little bit into there. And as well now what I'm going to do is press Command J, duplicate that and move the dot all the way to this side as well. Again, I'm using the cursors to go up and down, left and right, just to put it into the right position. Great. Okay, let's press Z, zoom out a little bit. I'm also going to go up to the window or basically view here and say clear guides. So I can already have a look at that. Great. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks all super amazing. I'm going to go back to history and just say move again. So I want to go back, so I want to get the lines again. Now I'm going to create again a new layer and on here I'm just going to write line. Okay, so before I start with the line, what I just want to say is here, if you have white as a foreground color, it will create the pen tool we're working with now, it will create a white line. If you have a black foreground color, it will create a black line. So you have to decide what you want and just choose the right one. I want to have a white line, so I'm going to choose the white over here. Zoom in a little bit closer. And now this I'm just doing by a feeling. I don't really go in and measure out how far I want the line to be. I literally just start over here and end somewhere. I'm going to press P for the pen tool. And again start over here. Just make a dot anchor point over here. Go all the way over here. And that's why I'm still keeping the lines. So it's easier for me for the lines. And I'm also having like kind of a look at the distance here. How far that goes from the first letter. So again, from this letter, like kind of maybe over here, again, as I mentioned now earlier, you can also calculate it here at the top with some help lines. I'm just too lazy to do it. Now, we've created a nice path over here. Last step that we have to do is press right click and just say here, stroke that path. Okay, now I also want to stroke this just with a normal pencil option here, not a brush, eraser or anything. If you want to do it with a brush, you can also do that. I'm just going to do it with a pencil because it's nice and thin. Hit OK and directly we have a line. Now I'm going to press Escape to get out of the pen tool. Double Escape over here. Also go to View, Clear Guides once again and you guys can directly see we have a nice line. But it's obviously going through the complete logo here, the branding. So what I want to do is again come, go to Marking Tool and select the Rectangular Marking Tool and just make like a nice selection here around the logo. Something like that. Again, having a look at the spacing. Let's zoom out a little bit again. Yeah, and then I'm going to hit delete. Press Command D, get out of the selection. Great, and now we've got two simple lines over here. And this one looks a little bit longer than this one. So again, marking tool. And let's just shorten this a little bit. Command D. Yeah, and that looks a little bit better. So I guess if you calculate this right from the start, it would actually be a little bit better. Yeah, but that's basically all. Last step that I was still going to do is just take all of these layers here and just maybe make a group, Command G, and write here again the lines and dots, so I know exactly what what is. Okay, and also my text over here, Command G, we can just write text and the lines with our starting layer, Command G, background. Okay, so that's basically all how I normally create this stuff. 
and again from start to finish here first of all creating just the background then the text and now the lines and now I'm ready to hit here file save as and I can save it obviously as a PSD file PNG or JPEG yeah and thanks again guys for watching this is the first design tutorial just a super quick one yeah hope to see you guys in our other and new upcoming design tutorials bye bye